Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Orga Torch D530V, which is a video light, one of their relatively newest lights coming out. Now, today we not only got the D530V, but we also got additionally the ball joint or ball joint mount, which is compatible with it, as well as the micro shooting snoot, yeah? which we're going to take a look in a minute. But depending on the package, you may get those two already included, and you're going to get, of course, a better package price. Now, the actual D530V comes in a nice package, as you can see, a nice paper, pa uh, plastic, plastic package, so paper and plastic. You can see the light in the front, but let's not talk too much about the actual packaging and let's get the light and all the accessories out of there. So, this thing is empty, well, we don't need it anymore, bye bye. Now, inside of the package, we actually not only have the light and, of course, the battery, which we're gonna need and we're gonna take a look in a second, but of course, we also have a warranty card in case you're gonna have any issues. But I've heard their customer service is very good in terms of that, and also we have a nice user manual. So, if this is one of your first lights buying, or in general, if you buy this light, take a look at the user manual. There are some nice information, some very important information for you to know before using. We have a lanyard, comes standard in most of their packages. We have a nice, and this I actually like, this is one of the newer things they're including now. It's a um, spare rubber ring for their um, rubber rings on the lights. The first ones they didn't come, I actually had one break, so now it's, now it's quite nice that they send a second one. If there's something happening, you can always replace the rubber ring. We have a spare set of O-rings. This is the most important thing on a proper diving light, having a spare set of the exact same and fitting O-rings. And then, of course, we have, in this case, the um, USB cable or micro USB cable to charge up our battery. Now guys, the light itself, yeah, which is the D530V, is actually quite small sized. Yeah? Maybe you can already recognize from the size um, the light itself because I actually reviewed the D530 30, which is not the video version, it's a smaller brother or however you want to call it. It's basically exactly the same light. Yeah, the only biggest difference is that instead of having a wide beam like this one, it has a nice narrow and pointy beam for actual diving. So I like to bring this in. They are ridiculously exactly the same lights. Yeah? So just for you to know and for you to know what is actually the difference between the D530 and the D530V. The V stands for video, which is a wide angle light, just for you to know the difference on that. Now guys, the D530V comes with exactly the same design, nice fins in the front, we have a nice switch with an integrated power indicator, and of course we have this very easy and recognizable orange rubber ring in the back, which I really enjoy on their design. Something new on the D530V is that they included a 30.5 millimeter thread in the front where you can screw on some colored filters, which will be very interesting for your video shootings, but also you can use their own snoot for macro photography which we're going to take a look in a second. The battery which comes included is actually an 18650 with a capacity of 3400 milliamp hours or 3.4 amp hours and the most important thing to tell in this case is that it is that it is a protected cell so it is protected over over this charging, overcharging, short circuit, and so on and so on. But most importantly, it is charged via micro USB and this actually removes the need for a separate external charger. So it actually just comes with a small cable, you plug the micro USB cable in there and you actually have two holes there for, let me see, there you can see them, two holes for the indicator LED. Of course we have a green for fully charged and a red for charging. Basically this is the same type of battery like these 18650s but you can see that the little bit of a difference in height is actually due to the charging module on these 18650s, which comes in very handy because you don't need to carry an external charger. Let's open the light up and we have a very smooth running thread. It runs so smooth, for me this is amazing. Huh? In here you can already see we have a nice setup of three O-rings, nicely and very far distance from the actual thread, and then we have a cleanly cut thread and there is nothing left on here. Yeah? And I'm actually showing you this, but I already opened this and closed this light at least like 10, 12, 15 times. So this is not the first time I'm opening. This light already did at least like five to seven dives with me. Yeah? Now we're gonna put in the battery, and actually I wanna show you this. They 
actually stick to this inner tube design. So in here, you actually have a separate tube which moves actually. So the negative pole from the battery, which goes on to that spring down there, doesn't come over the outer aluminium part from the light, but it only comes through this inner tube. And there is no electricity flowing over the outside. Um, tube, which is a very good design. And here we have, of course, a nice tray driver, all gold plated. The positive of the battery always goes towards the head. And now let's close the actual light down. As soon as the light is closed, we can start to operate it. We have a super easy button. We just press the button once for the high mode. And you can already see here we have a very wide angle of light. And this is basically the idea of a video light because you want to have the light behind your camera illumi illuminating the whole area for video or also for photo. I hope you guys can see that the indicator, they are a bit harder to see actually than on my D530, but can, you can still recognize it at the moment. It's red. Maybe it's also not that strong, the output at the moment. And when we press the button again, we are on the lower mode. This is like a mid mode, low mode. On a night I've, I've tried this light and it's actually perfect for shooting small macro things. I had it just over my camera, it was perfect to use for that. So that's a nice light. If we press it again, of course we have the off. Now these D530s come with one locking mechanism. So if you press the switch, it doesn't go on by accident. What I do, I just open the light a little bit and it won't turn on anymore, but they actually have a locking mechanism in here. If you press the light, um, if you keep the light pressed while it's on, it will flash twice and now it is locked. And it will only come out of the lock if you press it twice quickly. Now that was the, the way. It's a bit hard to, rem uh, to remember because it's different ways of pressing it. So to lock it, it needs to be on and you need to keep it pressed for a while until it blinks twice, like now. Then it is locked. You can press it as often as you want and you press it twice quickly to unlock the light and there we go. So this is a nice locking mechanism if you don't want to be opening and closing the light a little bit. Now let's come to the actual LED which you can see here in the front. It's a small chip LED and just for you to have a little bit of an example or an idea what type of LEDs are being used these days on the diving lights, we usually have either the COB, the chip on board type of LED, they are mostly used for video lights or also then they may use the so-called or smaller type of footprint LEDs, which are the actual smaller high power arrays of LEDs. They usually consist out of a single or out of only a few multiple, like two or four chips themselves. The COBs usually have 10, 20, 40, depending of course on the size of the COB. They can have a lot of small chips. They usually have, have only up to four. So here we are actually using a small type of normal onboard LED as we have here. And just for you to have a little bit of an idea to actually distinguish the two, because the COBs are usually a lot bigger in terms of area. Now, before we actually move on on how to go into the water, how to take the light and use it underwater, we actually want to take a look at two of the X accessories which are being sold mostly together with the D530V. First of it is actually the snoot. This snoot is made for underwater macro photography. And the way it is built up is actually, besides this orange thing, which is nice to just hold the snoot, is actually that inside here we have a lens. This lens, this optical lens, redirects the light into a different angle so it comes out more efficiently than just having the snoot. This lens will redirect the light into a smaller and more intense angle into this part. You can actually use the light without the smaller snoot on. Like this you're gonna have a relatively wide angle of light still. It's just gonna, let's just screw the actual snoot on there. It's going to be a bit of a wider angle of light as you can see and when you screw the smaller part on you're going to have even a more focused but most of all with less spill around spot of light and this is really a nice spot of small and clear, clear light. If you take a look from it or to it from a little bit further away it looks like you can see the square from the LED but if you go a bit closer or underwater you won't notice the square um, shaped size actually of the LED on the object you are illuminating. Now you have obviously the two modes but compared to the amount of light which comes out of it when it's not installed of course this is a lot less because you lose a lot of light inside of the snoot. The second thing to mount the actual 
ball joint holder you need to remove the battery part from the light you need to open this holder all the way until there is nothing remaining in here and then you're gonna slide this thing over and it actually goes over the Oryx. It's a very nice thing on this light. Most of other similar holders I've been seeing and adapters you need even to remove the Oryx to get it over. This one you don't need to remove the Oryx makes it a lot easier well and less risky for your Oryx. Let's call it like this. You're gonna close the light again and we have a holder installed. So we have a simple ball joint mount installed onto our light. We can adjust it by just opening this plastic screw. We can move it around. You can also adjust it a bit further to the front or to the back, depending where you need the weight point to be. I've always been installing it all the way to the front because the head is a lot heavier, including, of course, also the snood. And like this, you have actually a very nice setup for using it either without the snood for just some smaller photography or as a close-up video light, or also using the snood for some smaller macro shots where you only need a specific part of the image um, with some light so this is a very good advantage of the snood but just be aware you're wasting quite a lot of light because you have although a very focused um, amount of light but compared now for example to the d30 which outputs the same amount of light as the d530v well there's nothing to compare right you have a lot of more light coming out therefore here you have no spill around you only have the spot illuminating and this is why we actually use um, the snoots for underwater macro photography now guys i think i talked enough about the light itself and i would suggest we're going to jump into the water and we're going to check out how d530 with as well as without the snoot performs in the underwater diving environment so enjoy the diving So guys, I hope you enjoyed the actual underwater demonstration part of the D530V. As I always say, it's a very important thing to know how the actual light will perform in the environment where you, where you will be using it and not just only like on a bench test as here. So it's a very important thing to also see how it works underwater. So I hope you enjoyed that part. Now guys, some small pros and cons, let's call it, about this light. What I like a lot, of course, the design they kept with their nice stylish Orca Torch design. They have the snooth, it's a very good upgrade, it's the first snoot Orca Torch actually produces. And it actually has quite a nice output because it uses already a lens. There are some snoots out there from other brands which they started without a lens. And there you are really losing a lot of light intensity to just get a little bit of light out. So I actually like that they've been playing around already with the lens inside here. Then of course you have the advantage of just mounting a simple ball mount adapter on here and actually if you get it them in the set it costs just a few dollars. Yeah, if you get it outside and for some other brand sometimes you can pay up to 15-20 dollars just for this simple part and it's quite nice in the package they give you a very good price for that. Another positive thing is of course the battery comes with a USB or a micro USB in this case charging function so you don't need to carry an external charger if you just charge it from a power bank or a simple USB socket you can already charge up your battery. Something also quite nice is that they've been using the little bit stronger LED instead of using as XML and this can output up to 1200, 1300 lumens depending on how hard it's driven. This is around 1200 lumens, it's also the same as it says on the package, so it already brings out a little bit more light than 1000 lumens. We have a nice mounting part in the back, also if you use the light without any of the accessories, just as a simple video light or a simple hand light for the camera on the other hand, who knows how you use it, it's a good thing. In terms of negative things, well, there aren't many I can tell you, maybe they could have made the light a little bit stronger, 
because considering you're using an 18650 you could have taken a little bit more light out because like this you have quite a long run time it will last you over two hours if you're using it even on full so maybe they could have already installed a little bit of a stronger LED although I think this is coming in the near future if you need a stronger if you need a bigger light well you gotta get a bigger light so for a small pocket video light this is very good and very well made guys as usual I hope you enjoyed my video I hope it helped you to get an idea on how the D530V will perform and I also hope you enjoyed the underwater part and demonstration of the light. I hope to see you guys soon again on one of my videos here on the channel and from there on I always wish you a safe and good diving.